Hello everybody and welcome back to now the fourth episode of the Cooking Witch Podcast. I'm your host Jordan as always and I apologize for being gone for a couple weeks. Um, been going through some changes in the household and school and now I'm kind of getting back into a, a groove where I feel comfortable to start recording again. Um, for those of you who are new here, um, my name is Jordan. Um, I'm a cooking witch as well as an artist, um, full-time student, and now I work at a garden nursery. Um, so that's new. I just recently started that job about a week ago on Tuesday, and, you know, honestly, it's been really fun. Uh, but it's a lot of work, so if you plan on going to, into a nursery position, pre be prepared to be on your feet the entire day. Um, otherwise, let's get right into what we're going to talk about today. Um, obviously, I've been gone um, for a long time. <laughs> um, but during that period, I've been able to do a lot of cooking, a lot of baking, um, meditation, um, a lot of finding myself and, uh, coping with some anxiety. Um, I am a person who deals with very high anxiety to the point where it feels like my heart is literally going to leap out of my chest and or I stop breathing. So whichever it is, that's just depending on how bad or good my anxiety is that day. Um, but otherwise, um, on the list of cooking things, I've made quite a lot. Um, I wish I compiled the list before I even started talking, but to just kind of generalize everything, I recently made a, uh, strawberry pavlova with a Bavarian cream kind of filling in the center. And for those of you who don't know what a pavlova is, pavlova is like a meringue. It's like having, uh, a hardened marshmallow as your, let's say, base or the cake part. And then I layered some Bavarian cream on top and then some freshly chopped strawberries. And oh my goodness, was it so refreshing, so light and fluffy. And it just tasted overall really, really good. Um, another fun thing that I made was a mango layered cake, um, which was absolutely probably one of the best decorated cakes I've ever made. Um, I cut two uh, pancakes in half to create four layers and then in between each layer was a vanilla buttercream and kind of like instead of an apple sauce it was a mango sauce. So if you can kind of imagine an applesauce texture that's what the mango stuff tasted or texture was like. And then uh, made some homemade whipped cream to kind of finish off the edges on top of the cake as well as some buttercream and some fresh sliced mango. And by far, that was like probably one of the best cakes I've ever made. And the only thing I would say that I would do differently is probably add some like mango extract or use some frozen mangoes as well because I don't think my mangoes were quite ripe yet. Or 100% ripe. I also made a very interesting um, margarita lime pie. So if you're familiar with like a, a key lime pie or a key lime tart with kind of a, a custard filling. Um, that's kind of what it was except I just used normal limes because that's all it called for. But within this uh, custard, it said, oh, well, you can add a half a cup of tequila. Now, I'm looking at this recipe and thinking, that's a lot of tequila. And it's only asking me to put this in the microwave. Yes, it was a microwavable thing. It saved lots of time. But I put this in the microwave for five minutes. In that five minutes, none of that alcohol was cooked off. Or at least the, the strong smell of the tequila, like, lingered. It was there. And, um, 
Needless to say, we still have like a quarter of that pie in the freezer right now. Um, we're kind of on the fence if we want to uh, eat the rest of it or just toss it. But I would highly recommend if you see this margarita cake or a margarita cake similar to what I'm talking about. Um, and it calls for a lot of tequila. Do not put all that tequila in there. Put like maybe a tablespoon or two, or just nothing at all, because all you'll taste is tequila. Um, really? Ugh. I tried making gnocchi, so from scratch, but it was kind of a, a, a sweet potato gnocchi, and it was good. It was good. I made the gnocchi too big, and they tasted like firm cotton balls, which really wasn't a great texture to have in your mouth, which sounds really wrong, but it's just how I can describe this the best. And honestly, it didn't taste bad. We paired it with some chicken and a, a cream sauce with some pancetta. Um, and it tasted pretty good. It's just the gnocchi was just too thick. Um... But otherwise, I've kind of been on uh, a culinary journey in the past month, which is really nice because I love cooking and I love making people smile with the creations I make, either cooking, baking, or even with my artwork, which I'll probably do an art stream soon on Twitch, but that will be on Friday evening slash late evening. Um, not sure yet on how I want to do that, because that will probably be the first time I show my face on, um, a platform other than Instagram. Um, but otherwise, I'm looking into doing that. Um, but if you guys would like to see something different or have me talk about something different, that would be much appreciated. I am always in the mood to talk about stuff. As you can tell, I'm rambling right now because I have so many ideas in my head, but it's not as fun as uh, talking about stuff that you guys want me to talk about. But I figured, why not? Let's let's talk about some some deep stuff today. And I probably won't make this be a long episode just because I'm recording a little bit lighter in the evening than I normally would for a normal episode, so, you know, things get kind of chaotic in the evenings at my house because dinner and all that stuff, but let's just see where this takes us. Um, I figured we could talk about some uh, anxiety and uh, possibly about what I've learned in the past month of living my life. I'll put it to you that way. But, uh, I guess my anxiety comes from a lot of, let's just say, years of certain family trauma and, uh, school trauma. And for those of you who can't relate, it's, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll explain it to you this way. School and family are almost me with the anxieties. They're almost the same. And they give me about uh, the same amount of anxiety. One may be more than the other. But um, it comes down to, you know, can I, can I push through this? Can I deal with this? Can I um, learn to live with this? Because the anxiety usually never goes away for me. Um, it's always there. It's always in the corner or the back of my mind. And, you know, it's, it's just there. Um, but uh, my anxieties started with uh, elementary school. Um, I grew up in the Chicagoland area. And elementary school was kind of rough for me because... Um, I don't believe I've said this before, but 
I'm very outdoorsy. I go hunting, I go fishing. So for those of you who find that to be displeasing or aggravating, I apologize. Um, I truly love animals. Um, I respect them. I don't ever want to see an animal die for stupid reasons like getting hit by a car or just poaching. Pretty much anything with animal cruelty I have absolutely 100% against. Um, that being said, I was, I was kind of frowned upon at school because I was, let's just say, the odd person out in my classes because I did all this stuff. So that's where my anxiety started was because I was the cast out. I was the person who was considered weird, even though I was just a normal person. And for those of you who were in my elementary school, I was a normal person and I still am. <laughs> and uh, I would like to be treated as such. Um, but as a kid, that, that was really hard for me because I wanted friends. I wanted to be able to... Um, have a friend group or at least someone I could relate with and no one really related to me until I got to like middle school and then I started meeting more people who were kind of like me were a little different and uh did hunting and fishing or just liked some of the other things that um I like so I am an anime person so you know watching anime drawing anime now, I've tried to step away from drawing anime specifically, but it's still there. I still draw it, um, but I've kind of developed my own style from it. And uh, once I kind of found some friends that were, let's say, within that group, uh, the anxiety seemed to kind of diminish a little bit. Not, you know, all the way, but, you know, it, it was more tolerable. But um, then it was more the issue of I had friends who now thought I was uh, a therapist. Um, I'm always down to listen to anybody talk about anything or vent or uh, just kind of relay information to me and have trust in me that I'm not going to say anything to anybody else and I've always kind of been that person for my friend group or even just people outside my friend group and um you know I've been told you're the therapist in the friend group it's like cool but you guys don't really return that same let's say respect I consider friendship to be a two-way street and um or like kind of like driving on a road I will compare it to that. If you're coming in opposite directions where your friend is coming to you with all their problems and, you know, you're trying to at least listen to them, maybe not try to help them help them, but just try to at least let them get their feelings out, let the emotions come out, you're kind of going on that two-way road because most of the time that person won't want to hear your issue or problem. Now, I'm not saying that every friend or person is like this. I'm just saying from my personal experience that it has been this way. Um, I will say now that I have uh, a couple, two, three friends who, um, long distance, but uh, they, I can still rely on them to be there for me or I be there for them. I, it's it's working very nicely. But it came to a point in these past relationships that I've had with people, friendships and normal relationships like dating, where I wasn't getting that same respect back. You know, I would try to hash out my feelings or at least just kind of explain what's on my mind. And it would come down to, well, you're being too emotional. You're you're saying all these wrong things. And it's like, I'm just trying to tell you what is on my mind. Whether that may be me being a little emotional, but it's just me trying to express how I feel. I'm not 
angry at you. I'm not, unless it is about that person. But it's like, I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry at you. You know, I just would like to express how I feel about this. And maybe have you listen and see if I'm crazy for feeling this way. And uh, most of the time that person or peoples would uh, not listen to me. And, you know, it ended up being the downfall of some of those friendships slash relationships. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for the few friends that I have now. Or at least the few, the people I can at least call a friend or, you know, somewhere along those lines. Um, it's still really hard for me to make friends because even within my college, there's all this high school drama that lingers. And honestly, I don't think that high school drama ever leaves anybody. And um, I even notice it with my own parents. It's like, they still look for that, that dramatic point. And it's just like, I don't want to hear it. I'm trying to get away from all the drama. I'm trying to just kind of live my life. And uh, I don't need someone bringing their own, let's say, drama into the conversation anymore. And I've kind of now decided I'm not going to be anybody else's therapist because no one's uh, decided they can do that. Give me that same respect back. So... For those ex-friends slash relationships slash whatever you were to me, um, I'm no longer your therapist. Just saying. I am my own person, and until anybody can listen to me, period, no one is going to have me as a therapist. Ever. <laughs> and I know that sounds harsh, and everybody's gonna be like, well, Jordan, that's a little harsh, don't you think? And it's like, no, I don't think it is. I'm worrying about myself before I worry about anybody else now. And of course, I would still drop everything to help my friends out that I have now. But, you know, I expect them to also, you know, help me out if I need it. Maybe not right away, but they'll be there if I need it. And, um... That was kind of the anxieties with school, was just not having that friend group, not being able to have anybody listen to me and uh, whatnot. And uh, then it kind of traveled into family, which I won't go into too much detail about that one, because that's a little personal. But um, I live in a very strict household. I'm an only child, um, so everything kind of weighs down on me and my family. And it, it's gotten to a point where nothing I do is good enough for my parents, or at least one of my parents. And um, it's becoming more and more apparent uh, to the point where I've been called a burden to my family and um, problematic. Which is hard to believe because I'm not problematic. I'm usually a very calm person. I do have emotions just like everybody does. But um, usually I, I bottle them up, which really isn't good uh, at all. And uh, sometimes it gets to a point with the bottling up that I literally just scream. I will scream into a pillow. I will just, in period, just scream in the house. Usually when no one's home. But some there's been a couple instances where I've just screamed because I'm so fed up with everything <laughs> but no i i am not um not going to end my life i'm not going to do that i'm nowhere near any of that and i don't think i ever will be and you know i'm not gonna jinx it but um i know i'm a strong person and i know i can get through it even if it's just me myself and i so there's all that anxiety that comes through that but the best way for me to deal about it when, from my perspective, is really just to separate myself from the problem or walk away. And I've had people tell me, well, that's kind of stupid because you're just letting the problem continue. And then when you get back to it, you'll just have to deal with it again. And I will usually respond back with, yes, I will have to deal with it once I come back. 
but at least when I come back, I'm not going to yell, I'm not going to scream, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to be calm and collected, and I'm going to be able to comprise um, well-rounded thoughts versus frantic ones. And, um, you know, it's been sometimes a problem where I don't realize that, hey, I need to step away from this problem and I continue to deal with it and it usually goes into an argument. And I've realized now that sometimes I just need someone to remind me, Jordan, you just need to step back and take a moment to yourself and think for a moment. And it's kind of like that whole think before you speak, before you say something you regret. And I think I've said a lot of things I regret. Some maybe more than others. And some of the stuff that I said, I don't think I regret. Because it, it was coming from a place of absolute frustration and uh, hurt and anger sometimes. But sometimes that's the only way I can actually truly say how I feel is if I'm in those emotional points. And that sounds wrong, but to me, it's the only way I can uh, properly say how I feel to somebody how I feel, but that doesn't work for everybody usually to just kind of walk away and then come back. But I suggest if you are going through some anxiety or a problem that maybe just stop and think to yourself before you say your next words, because you never know if it'll end up hurting a friendship, a relationship, uh, a parent-to-child relationship. You don't know how it's going to unfold. And um, you really need to think before you say what you're going to say. Because most of the time, all of us will say something we regret. And um, more often times, uh, that person will hate us or loathe us or you know, won't want to speak to us ever again. And uh, I think that hurts more in the end than uh, walking away for a few minutes and coming back. Um, I mean, there's other ways of dealing with anxiety. Meditation, calming your mind, uh, doing something that makes you happy before you do something that'll aggravate you because... Um, or even thinking about something that makes you happy, um, a pet, uh, a person that means a lot to you, um, uh, a show that you really like, some artwork, whatever it is, whatever makes you happy, think about that and usually it'll help calm your mind. Um, of course, if you get to the peak of anxiety like I do, where your heart seizes up and you can't breathe anymore... Um, yeah, really walk away and say, I can't breathe right now. And, um, kind of figure out how to calm yourself down, whether that be music, whether it be drinking some water, taking some deep breaths, whatever that may be. And just try to, try to calm your heart down and get it to a point where it's manageable and you can breathe again. Because I know it's different for everybody, but I feel sharing my experiences um, helps a little bit or helps people feel like they're not alone if they're feeling something and figure out that someone else is also feeling that same way. But, um, yeah. But on a positive note, yes, we're just going to switch gears like that. Um... I was recently in a D&D campaign for the first time, or technically second time, but um, I call it a success. It was supposed to be a one-shot, but the one-shot never got finished in the one day, so it moved on to it in a second day, and now we're going to actually have to move on into a third day. But um, this past time, I decided to record the entire thing. And uh, we did it on Roll20 because we were all in different areas. And uh, we did it on Roll20. And um, it was a lot of fun. 
It really was. And um, I think I might be posting some of those videos soon to a different channel that we're going to set up. Because we're probably going to start actually recording all these sessions now. Kind of like um, Critical Role does a little bit. Um, probably won't be nearly as long as their episodes, but maybe just giving small tidbits of what we're doing or some funny stuff that we learned. Um, our DM is like absolutely great at creating stories and creating a uh, mission that is fun for all of us. Um, even with all the creepy stuff sometimes, but he understands at least to a point that all of us has a fear or something and understands that and usually won't add that. But um, that was not the case this time. There was some spiders involved and I hate spiders. Um, I don't hate them. I just, I find them creepy. And to people who like spiders, I mean no offense. I just find them terrifying. I do not like touching them. I do not like having them around me in my house. And I know as a witch, that's kind of weird. But even witches have fears of some stuff and won't touch some stuff. And this is one of them. And I will tell you right now, I will never own a pet spider. Ever. I have a, two dogs and a hermit crab. And I'm perfectly fine with those. And I've had friends tell me, well, your hermit crab is like a, a sea spider. And I'm like, but this sea spider doesn't want to bite me. It just wants to pinch my finger. And that's a little stereotypical of me to say that spiders bite all the time. And that's not entirely true. But I just don't like spiders. And my DM added spiders as our main target. And I was terrified because uh, he went into detail. My friend went into detail of all the, the stuff that was happening with the spiders. And I'm like, nope, I, I can't listen to this anymore. And uh, I don't think we'll be having spiders anymore. We'll see. To our DM, if you're listening to me right now, please no more spiders. Thank you. <laughs> um... But um, I will be doing the cover art for all of those uh, episodes. Um, like I said, I'm an artist in art school. And I've been drawing for a very long time. And uh, to kind of share my art more to more than just Instagram would be really cool. Um, and uh, help me branch out a little bit. Um, I might step into some animating, but I haven't really gotten there to in any of my classes, but we'll see where that takes me. Um, but otherwise, I think that's where I'm going to end it for this episode. As always, leave a comment, subscribe, leave a like, do something. I'm trying to get out there at least a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I will see you hopefully one more time this week, maybe with a co-host. If not, I will see you next week. And um, we no longer have a schedule anymore because it's become too chaotic. So pretty much whenever I get a video, I will probably post it. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one.